Hi, this is Robert, and in this video, I want to talk to you a couple of minutes about engine compression. Now, your engine, of course, is the heart of your car. If your engine goes out, your car doesn't run anymore. If your engine loses oil, your car won't have the blood in the heart to keep it pumping. It won't run anymore. Another thing about an engine is an engine needs pressure compression to run right you know it's kind of like you need fuel and you need oxygen and things like that to keep yourself going if somebody stops the oxygen from building up in your lungs you suffocate well at the same way in a car if your car doesn't get the right amount of air oxygen on top of the pistons it doesn't fire right and in most cases when a car gets more and more mileage, it loses its ability to have compressed air in it that causes the car to fire, spark, and keep running. Now, almost all of our cars run by combustion. We have combustion engines, unless you have a hybrid or an electric car that runs strictly on electricity. If you're pumping gas in your car, that gas has to be fueled uh, pumped into the engine and burned off in order to make your car run. Now if you have a four cylinder engine, a six cylinder engine, an eight cylinder engine, those are how many cylinders that fuel is getting pumped in and those pistons come up and make a real tight fit and then the fuel is squirted in that cylinder and then the spark plug lights a spark in there that causes a small explosion. Now, if your car is running at idle, 800 rounds per minute, that means that each one of those pistons are having 800 explosions per minute. If you're running down the highway and you're running at 2,000 RPMs, each piston is having 2,000 explosions per minute in that car basically how the combustion works properly is you have a chamber cylinder in the engine there's a piston at the bottom you got a spark plug uh, bolted in to the piston chamber then you have a fuel injector that's also in that chamber that squirts a little bit of fuel in there now your fuel system squirts the fuel the piston comes up and takes that volume of air and makes it real tight then the spark lights off and causes the explosion okay so your car is firing off firing off these little explosions every once in a while you'll hear somebody mention something about a car missing or misfiring well in general what can cause that to happen is one your fuel injector is not squirting fuel in there or enough fuel in there two your spark plug is not lighting the fuel or three if those two things are working properly your compressed air that is squozing by the pistons is not compressing the air enough the air is escaping around the sides of the piston and it causes a dead explosion which is a misfire so I say all that to say this if your car is not running smooth it's an older car it has some miles on it there's a chance that your pistons are getting worn or your valves are not sealing and these explosions are not happening the way they need to be so it may be time to get your motor rebuilt or something like that now if you're considering buying a used car and you have no knowledge of the car's history if the oils was changed all the time or how tight the engine is a simple way of checking the blood pressure per se of your car's motor or the air compression numbers is, is by having a compression test done. Now what I have in my hand is a gauge that shows compression in a car engine. This little gauge here attaches to this hose like this. It's just a little quick connect. then this hose screws into the motor 
where your spark plug goes. It could have a little tip on it that reached down in the spark plug hole, but you basically pull the spark plug out, put this in there, and you deactivate the fuel system so it's not squirting fuel in there. You deactivate the ignition so it's not trying to fire the ignition. You put your foot all the way on the gas and you crank the motor till you hear it crank maybe seven to ten times. Most people say at least five seconds. You'll hear the engine trying to start. It'll make some kind of noise. When you hear that noise gasp or whatever seven to ten times, that should be enough. You let go the key. You come and read this gauge. Now, most cars that I've seen, they need to have engine compression at least 150 PSI on this gauge. Now, some of them will have at least 185 to be considered healthy. My car, they say as long as those compression numbers are between 156 and 185, your engine is healthy. It should be firing okay, and you can keep driving that car without needing the motor rebuild. So, I went recently went over 200,000 miles, and I said to myself, you know, I feel like my motor's real tight. I feel like it has very little wear, but I'm gonna do a compression test on my car just to see what my numbers are. My numbers are supposed to be between 156 and 185. When I check my compression on my car with over 200,000 miles on it, every number was 175 to 180. So I checked all five of my pistons. I have a five cylinder engine and every one of my numbers was at least 175. Three was 175, one was 178, another one was 179. That told me that my motor, as far as the pistons were concerned, had very little wear on it, and that was a very tight motor. Most people have this thing in their head that if a car has over 100,000 miles, it's got some miles. If it's got over 150, man, you, you need to think about replacing that motor or getting that car changed. If it's got over 200, surely that motor's worn out. Well, I'm here to tell you, Somebody has been changing the oil in this car on a regular basis because when you keep oil, fresh oil in the car motor, it will help that motor not wear. And if you have a very good uh, engineered motor, like I believe the one in my car is, that motor can last 500,000 miles before it needs to be rebuilt, maybe longer. And if you use certain types of oil, it could go even longer than that. I've heard of people having a van or a work truck that they put synthetic oil in and that motor had 900,000 miles on it without ever having to be torn apart or rebuilt. So I want to encourage you not to be afraid of miles on your car, especially if you have a compression test done. Now if you ever take your car in to have the tuned up, the spark plugs change, that's the best time to request that the mechanic do a compression test. If they're going to be pulling those spark plugs out already, it may only take them another 15 minutes to do a compression test on that car. So, if you have a car that has over 150,000 miles, I encourage you, hey, have a compression test done, find out what the numbers are supposed to be, find out what your numbers are, that'll give you a good idea of the wear in your car's engine. And if you have compression numbers that are getting low, you may want to consider replacing the car or the motor. If your compression numbers are high, drive that car until you're tired of it. Now, I had a lady contact me. She was having some misfires in her car. They weren't constant misfires. It was missing like every so often. So I went and did a compression test on her car. She had one number that was a 95 another number that was a 120, another number that was a 135, then she had three numbers that were around 150, 155. So half of her pistons were worn or something in that car was worn to where it wasn't firing good. Now that car did have 185,000 miles on it, so that wasn't too bad. 
my recommendation to her was keep driving it till you're tired of driving it or it quit. You know, sooner or later, those pistons are going to get so low on compression that it's not going to run right. And at that point, if it costs more to replace that motor or rebuild that motor, then it would cost to replace the car. Just replace the car. Now, I want to encourage you again. If you're considering buying a used car that has an excess of, man, I would go so far as to say 50,000 miles. I've heard of people having a new car and never changing the oil for 30,000 miles. That old oil will wear pistons out quicker than anything else. So, if you're looking at buying a car that's out of warranty, has more than 50,000 miles, and especially if it has a misfire code, on your check engine light do have a compression test done before you buy that car now if you test drive a car you drive it around 15 miles you drive fast you drive slow and that check engine light works but it doesn't come on with your driving you may be okay but if that car has an excess of a hundred thousand miles pay a mechanic to do a compression test if you plan on keeping that car for more than a year or two because if it has low compression, it's not going to run good, and it's not going to run long. Well, that's my uh, thing about compression. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them remarks under the video.